Jeep hack. <laughs> but not just Jeeps, cars, trucks, boats, RVs, everything. How often do you change your oil? Every 3,000 miles? Let me show you why you're changing it way too often and throwing money down the drain. Stay tuned. Right here with the Black Widow. Put another G pack, but it works for everybody's vehicle. It also works for boats, snow blowers, lawnmowers, cars, trucks, motorcycles, anything you put gas and oil in. How often do you change oil? What do they tell you to do? Every 3,000 miles, right? And if you use synthetic, less, not less, more. 5,000, maybe six. Let me show you how you can change your oil once every 10,000 miles, minimum. First of all, let's explain, and I'll show you at the end, so stick around to the end. And by the way, if you want to, like, comment, subscribe. It helps the channel, that's all. But anyway, let's talk about why you change your oil in the first place and why there's oil in your crankcase. Why is there a crankcase full of oil? Here's why. The internal combustion engine is a very, very old piece of technology. The only thing new on your engine for 2022 going into 23 is the little bells and whistles and computerized stuff that helps that motor do certain things that, uh, that align with the EPA, okay? But overall, it's the same concept. You got a spark plug, right? That spark plug makes a spark. And inside that spark plug chamber is some gas. And when that spark sparks, that gas ignites. And when it ignites, it makes that piston move. That energy makes that piston move, right? I'm, look, I don't know. Any, I don't even change my own oil. But I've seen this enough times to know exactly how it works. And when it makes that spark, it, it comes back down. And then it sparks again, goes back up, sparks again, goes back down. Okay? So that happens thousands and thousands of times. That creates the movement of the piston. The piston moves. When it moves, it makes the car move, okay? Car, truck, motorcycle, boat, whatever. All right, now, the inefficiency of that model is why you get carbon released, right? The gas is made of carbon, and the more it's burned, the more carbon is released. Kind of weird, huh? But that's what happens. Okay, so, when it sparks, and when the gas is ignited, because the gas molecules are so big, it burns slow. And when it burns slow, it says burn. And then when it comes back down, the exhaust, in other words, the soot, the excess carbon is distributed out through your engine. That excess carbon acts like rocks. It's grating up against your cylinders, the head, everything, right? It's like sand, it's like pouring sand in your engine. So what is the oil for? The oil is designed to lubricate the engine walls and the corners and the nicks and crannies and the rings and all that stuff so that that gas does not create more problems. It's an old technology that hadn't changed it yet. Now, moving parts require lubrication of some sort, all right? So when they're moving, you gotta put some lubrication in it because you got carbon being released all over it. That black soot goes into the sump and then it circles back around. That's why your oil gets black, right? If it wasn't for that excess pollutants and that excess carbon, that oil would never change color. It'd be nice and golden the whole time, right? Okay, now, you change your oil every 3,000 miles because on average, based on driving, of course, and if you use non-synthetic oil, that oil is catching all of that soot. Every time it goes through the engine, it goes through there to wipe that soot off the edges of everything or at least lubricate what it can't wipe off. And that soot gets caught in the oil and it goes down into the sump and then it circles back around and it just keeps circling back around. It's not like the oil runs out onto the street, right? So it keeps circling inside the engine. As it circles inside the engine, 
it creates more and more soot because every time it fires, it creates more soot. So after an average of about 3,000 miles, that oil is black and it no longer has the viscosity, the slickness, because there's so much carbon in it. So they have to come in and drain it all out and put some new in so it can do the same thing over and over and over again. And no matter how many times you change your oil, it's going to get black because of the inefficiency of the fuel burning process. Okay, that's for all the scientific people. That's for all the car nuts. I'm not a car nut. I don't know nothing. I have never changed the oil in this Jeep. All right, so I don't really care. I really don't care now. I've got my own guy that works on my Jeep. I don't go to, you know, any place except to change my oil on occasion when he's not available. But I know how much an oil change costs, right? And if you put synthetic, you're really getting hit, right? So let me show you how you make that oil change about once every year, maybe. Maybe. Click on the link. <laughs> Click on a link. Not only don't buy another gallon of gas until you see this, don't buy another quart of oil until you see this, don't buy another oil change until you see this. Right? I'm changing lives today, y'all. <laughs> Again, don't buy another gallon of gas until you see this. Don't buy another quart of oil until you see this. Go to don't buy another gallon.com. Watch it. And if you don't agree with me, don't do anything. But if you agree, let's get it moving. Time to save money, guys. It's time to quit getting hacked, getting jacked up over people just deciding they want to charge you a bunch of stuff. Right? All right? Let's get going. And as always, imparted, peace and accelerate.